So you want to configure your Linux system to add more users with sudo privileges? You can either add those users to the sudo or wheel group, depending on the distro you're using, or you can add them to the sudo or file, which gives much more granular control. In this video, we will look at how to modify the sudo or file to add users, set parameters for password entry, and limit access to specific programs. So if I can add a user to the sudo group, why would I want to mess with the sudoers file? Well, the answer comes in the fact that the sudo file allow the system administrator to specify which users and groups can use sudo for which specific tasks. The file contains configurations for execution permissions and password requirements as well. As I'd covered in a different video, adding a user to the sudo or wheel group is quick and easy. Right, you just use the sudo user mod dash a capital G sudo or wheel depending on the distro and then the name of the user. Now the user demo can basically perform all root level tasks by doing a sudo. But what if we don't want that? What if we only want to allow the user demo to manage the web server and nothing else? This is where the sudo or file comes into play. So what is this sudo or file? Basically the file is the security policy specifications for using the sudo command. The location of the file is slash etsy slash sudoers. So why don't we take a look at it? So I'm gonna do more of slash etsy slash sudoers and I get a permission denied. So let's do a ls-l on the file and we can see that the permissions are set such that only root and members of the root group can read this file. So let's use sudo to read the file. I'm gonna do sudo more slash etsy slash sudoers. And the first thing we see at the top of the file is that it says that you must edit the file using the vi sudo command. So let's make a mental note of that as we will definitely come back to it. Second thing of note is the recommendation to add content in the folder slash etsy slash sudoers.d folder instead of directly modifying this particular file. As we look at this file, we see these lines about defaults, which we are going to skip for the sake of this beginner's video. Post in the comments below if you want a more detailed video covering the other parameters here. So let's get down to the lines about user privilege specifications where it says root and then a tab and then all equals all colon all and then another all that's a lot of alls so let's break this down the way to read this line is that it starts with who does this apply to so in this case it's root and then there's a tab and then the next parameter is where does this apply to right so in this case it says all so all machines where this file is set to and then within the parentheses, it's basically specifying who is this running as. The first parameter is the user, and then the second one is for the group. And then after that, we get a space. And then the last parameter set is for what, right? What commands are being run, right? So again, the way we read this line is that the username root can run on all systems as all users from all groups for all commands. And in this host field here, we can basically use a host name or IP number, and you can name more than one host by specifying them all separated by commas. For the parameters here within the parentheses, sudo allows a user to execute the command as another user, you know, assuming that user has the permission to execute the command. And again, you can execute it as a specific user or as a specific group member. And for this last command field, uh, you can specify multiple commands by specifying them as a comma separated list. All right, so for the next line, the leading percent means that it is a name of a group, right, instead of a regular user. So in this case, percent sudo means it is the sudo group. So this line says that anyone in the sudo group can run on all systems as all users and all groups, all commands. So this is why when you add someone to the sudo group with a user mod command, you are essentially giving them privileges 
to do anything they want on the system. So this may not be a good idea. And as you can see here, the last line of the file is the directive to include anything in the slash etsy slash sudoers.d folder. All right, so anything in that folder is gonna be read in and included as part of this sudoers file. So this is the method to allow additional security rules without changing this original file. And one thing to note is that any files that you add within the sudoer.d folder and within those files, if there are lines that are in conflict with anything in the sudoer file, the last rule to be read is the one that applies, right? So anything that's in the sudoers.d folder will override anything in this sudoer file. All right, so let's create our own entry for the sudoer file. First, let's take a look at what groups we're currently belonging to. So I'm just gonna type the command groups and we see in here that this account user is already part of the sudo group. So I can do anything on pretty much all systems. And I can actually use another method to see what this user can do by doing sudo dash lowercase l. Lowercase l basically stands for listing of all allowed commands. And so you can see is that user is allowed to execute as all users and groups, all commands. And the second line here basically just says that there is no password requirement. And I will explain that shortly. Okay, and then to set up this tutorial so that it's easier to view, I'm gonna set up a tmux session so that I can have multiple windows up at the same time so it's easier to see this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and do tmux, I'm gonna launch tmux and I'm gonna split the screen in half. In the top window, I will do a vi sudo of a new file called new rules under the etsy sudoers.d folder as recommended. All right, so let's say for example that for the account named Blue Monkey Forensics, we want to be able to run as root for everything. So then we can add the following line. All right, so I'm just gonna say Blue Monkey Forensics is the name of the account, a tab, all equals open parentheses all end parentheses space and then all and i can go ahead and save the file and in the bottom window i'm going to go ahead and switch to the blue monkey forensics account so i'm going to do sudo su dash blue monkey forensics and now i will look at the file that only root can look at so I will use the sudo command before the head command of the file named Etsy shadow. So sudo head dash three of Etsy shadow. So I'll get prompted for a password. And after I type in the proper password, Blue Monkey Forensics is able to perform the sudo command. By default, there is a five second cache of the password. So you don't have to retype it if you are within that five minute window. If we want to bypass the password prompt, we can modify the line we added before by redoing the vi sudo of the new rules file. So in the top window, I'm just gonna do bang bang. And now we're back in the file. I'm gonna add the word no password colon in front of the command uh, for all. So what this is gonna tell sudo to do is not to ask for a password for any executed commands. So we can demo this by running the last command again in the bottom window. And I'm gonna wait a little bit to wait for that five minute timeout. Obviously we're gonna speed up the video so you don't have to sit here for five minutes. Five minutes later. And once I execute that command, notice that I did not get asked for the password again when I reran sudo. And I know your next question will be, hey, how do I change that default five minute timeout? Well, what you can do is set the value in the sudoer file with the variable timestamp underscore timeout. And the value is in the unit of minutes. So let's go back to the top window and redo that vi sudo command. And what we're gonna do is add a line that says defaults space timestamp underscore timeout equals, and then you give it a time and that time unit is in minutes. So you can say three minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, etc. And I believe 
that there is a two digit limit so you can only go up to 99 minutes and then there's also special ones where you can put zero if you always want to ask for a password or negative one which is only going to ask for a password once every terminal session so the first time you do it it's going to ask for the password and then it won't do it again all right you can also specify a different timeout period for individual users right so it's not just for all users and what we can do is after the word default we can put colon and then a name of a user so in this case blue monkey forensics if you want to allow blue monkey forensics to have sudo privileges for only one command instead of all commands we can modify the line within the sudo file to actually contain the specific command and instead of the last word saying all we're going to change it to slash user slash sbin slash vi sudo and so when we go back to the bottom window and we execute that uh, sudo command again we're going to be asked for a password and then once we type in the correct password we're going to get denied because we don't have permission to run the head command because we only gave it permission to do the vi sudo command so let's go ahead and try to execute the vi sudo command and once we type in the password we do have permission because we can now see the contents of the file now when we execute a command that we do have permission to do we are successful and one last thing about uh, vi sudo is the reason why the system forces you to use vi sudo to edit the uh, sudo or file is because this vi sudo actually checks the syntax of the file before it saves it Right? Otherwise, your system may be left in a weird state if there's errors in the studio file when it's saved. So, modifying the studio file is a way to get more granularity and control over which users can have sudo access, what commands they can use sudo on, and the timing for asking for the password or not at all. And for even more info on the sudo file, you can actually do a man of sudoers, and you'll get tons and tons of good info. I know that you will enjoy another Linux forensics video like this one here. Click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.